Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGaga.com. In this video, we are going to look at how to apply conditional formatting to your Excel charts. Now, you may be familiar with the conditional formatting tool of Excel, the amazing tool that allows you to kind of visualize your data better. But unfortunately, they do not have such a feature in Excel to apply to your charts. But the great news is that there is a way to do it, and even better, it's not necessarily that difficult. Now, I'm going to go through two examples, though, in this video to you know get familiar and get used to this technique. And in this first example, what I have is this drop down list in cell B3. And I would like to be able to select a product from that list, like dishwashers, for example. And when I do that, notice that the columns of the charts are automatically changing to show me that data. If I ask for televisions, they go and highlight the television column. And that's the behavior I want. At the moment, that's not happening in the first column chart because that's what I'm going to demonstrate. That's the chart I'm going to use for demonstration in this uh, example. So let's do that. And the data that these charts are using is coming from this data tab. So you can see the last three already done. They've got this extra column with a formula in. I'm going to walk us through that by doing that formula in column C here. So your first job is to add an extra column which will perform the conditional logic. It will tell Excel which columns to highlight. And you can take your pick here. There's a few logical functions of Excel, but by a million miles, the most well-known would be if. So let's go with that. That does the job. Why overcomplicate things? I'm going to use this if function to test if the name of this product, so the first one here being gaming consoles, is equal to the product selected by the user on this sheet, sales by product. That is cell B3 over there. Because uh, there's a drop down list, I'm just going to click outside of it and then move into it. So it will say is A4 equal to sales by product B3. And I'm going to put in a couple of dollar signs there to fix that reference. And keep going. Comma. Let's go back to my other sheet and select the sales value. So I'm saying the value of true, if that is the same product, if that's the product the user selected, then chart the value in B4, that sales total. I don't really need that data sheet reference. I'm going to delete that. Not that it was doing any harm. Comma. Value if false. What if it's not the same product? Well, in that case, I don't want to chart the value. That gives us the conditional element. I'm going to insert the NA function here. So NA in a couple of brackets. And then one more bracket for the close of the if function. And I'm inserting that function to display the hash and a error. Which you can actually see in the other tables of this sheet, what's been done. And I'm doing that because Excel will not chart an error value. So by asking it to display an error value... I am essentially asking it to hide those values in the chart. You know, don't chart those values. So when I press enter, that one comes up with hash and a, and I'll copy it down, and I can see it only brings across the value for televisions. Because if you remember, or as you can see on these other tables, that is the product currently highlighted back on the other sheet. So if I go back there now, here we go. The next step now is I've got this chart already set up, but I need to get it to use that extra column that we just created with that formula. So I'm going to select my chart. There are different ways of doing this, but I'm going to click on design at the top. This is Excel 2013. It may be slightly different than yours. Select data. And I'm going to edit it to include column C in that data range where it's got A4 to B10, A4 to C10, please, because I created this extra column C, which you can see in the background. I'll click OK, 
and it picks up that extra column. Doesn't look great yet, there's a couple of extra little charting tricks, but it's there. Only for televisions you can see that orange column. Okay, so the first thing I might do, or I will do, not <laughs> no might about it, is get rid of this data label. I'm going to click on that and press delete. I only want a data label for one of the series. I don't need two lots of data labels. And then I'm going to double click on the orange one, the conditional formatted column. So that will open up on the right hand side for me in Excel 2013. You may get this as a dialog box. But however you get it, there will be a series overlap option. And we want that to say 100% to overlap the column over the other one. I'll press enter to confirm and our work here is done. You can do any other chart formatting you wish, but now we have that effect. And if I go and change that product again to maybe vacuum cleaners, then you can see they automatically change. Vacuum cleaners immediately uh, visible that wasn't too good last year. Massive improvement. Okay, so that's one example. Next example will be a lot quicker. It's just to cement the technique we just did. And in this example, what I've got is a this year versus last year. So it's the same kind of data, but a different example. I can see it's telling me between the two weeks that this week there was only an improvement in gaming consoles and music and sound. Nothing else improved. I want to do the same for the years. Just like the previous example, the chart is already ready to go on the most part. We need to pop over to data and the only fi difficult thing really in these techniques is getting that logical formula in and you may be quite comfortable with that you may not be depending on your experience in this example i want to know if the sales total of that product is better than or equal to the sales of the same product last year now because these tables are sorted in uh, largest to smallest order by sales that means they're not always in the same place so games consoles is first in this year's table but it's not first in next year's it's third so i'm going to use the vlookup function to find the product and return the relevant value so let's do that cell c4 equals if open in bracket if the sales of that product is greater than or equals to V lookup that product name games consoles comma in last year's table I'm going to fix that reference comma when you find it return whatever is in the second column of that table the sales figure there in column F E is one F is two comma false an exact match please close bracket so that's the criteria is the value for this year greater or equals to the value for last year basically but i've had to use a vlookup to find and return that value comma um value of true will be to show the value comma value of false is the error value show the hash and a error and if i continue with this I'm expecting the first two only to be improvements here. You see game consoles and vacuums uh, were improvements uh, compared to the value from, from last year, but nothing else is. We go back to our charts. I select the chart. We may have to create it in the examples you're doing, but right now I already have one. I just need to get it to use the extra column. And that's come straight in with the overlap. But I am going to get rid of those data labels. Remember, if I needed to overlap that, I would just double click on one of those new data series, new columns, and make sure that series overlap is 100%. Which it already is. Happy days, that saved me uh, that effort, I guess. And that is how we can apply a conditional format into your Excel charts. It's all about the logical formula. You can apply conditional formatting for whatever condition, whatever reason you want. As long as you can write that formula, you can use the same chart technique 
to automatically highlight the columns that meet the criteria or even the lines if you had the line graph it doesn't only apply to column charts here i hope you enjoyed this tutorial please check out some of our other videos on our youtube channel check us out at computergargard.com as well It'd be great to see you